You're live. No one's here yet. <laughs> I know no one's here yet. But today, I'm going to show off a brand new project I have. This uh, species of lizard, actually, I found out about it not too long ago. And when I found out about it, when the first time I saw it, I just thought it was the coolest thing ever. So a couple years later, decided to get one. And I'm going to breed them. They're fairly easy to keep and easy to breed, so hopefully I'll have good luck. As you can see, we're in the Tiki's Geckos facility number two, my bedroom. But um, that's besides the point. This is a Cuban false chameleon, okay? You know what's funny about this thing right here? This thing fell and broke, okay? So one time I was uh, gonna take off the lamp and I grabbed it by that right there and I got shocked. Almost died, but we're, we're good now. Okay, so this thing right here is a Cuban false chameleon. The scientific name is Chameleolis Barbados. One, uh, I posted this guy on my Snapchat a couple days ago and like a couple people um, messaged me asking me if it was a chameleon. This is actually an anole. And as you can see, he's pretty interesting. His scales are nice and round, very big. His eye, he has a big ass head, you know, chameleon like eyes and a really cool beard right here in the bottom. Um, that's where their scientific name comes from. It's a uh, Chameleolis Barbados, Barbados coming, meaning beard basically. And these guys are fairly easy to keep. Um, you want to keep them, you know, they are arboreal. You want to keep them with a lot of branches and maybe some like sphagnum moss in the bottom to help with the humidity. They're native to Cuba. Um, and they're very similar looking to the Cuban night anole, except the Cuban night anoles obviously have some like uh, bright greens and stuff. But the Cuban night anoles, for those of you guys, especially those of you that live in Florida, you know how mean those things could be. These guys are tame as could be. Um, they're, they're by nature, they're very slow and, and just very like tame. This guy has never tried to bite me or anything. He never like flares up at me and he is just a really cool looking mini dinosaur. But you were asked questions? what size tank? So right now I have him in a 10 gallon tank. He isn't finished growing. Um, I expect to put him in a bigger tank, um, especially one, once I get him a girlfriend, but this is just kind of like a temporary solution. Um, is he gonna jump? Is he not gonna jump? Okay, so you can house them like in an 18 by 18 by 18, uh, one of those Zoomed cubes, the 18 by 18 by 18 inches. Um, you can house one or two in there. The males, obviously, you want to keep house them together, and you could house a male with a couple different females if you want to breed them. Um, this guy is a male, and the way you could sex these guys is actually on the tail base. They have, I don't want to bother him too much, but. On the tail base, they have a scale with a small dot on it. Let me see if I can find it here. Hold on. While you're looking for that, <laughs> someone asked what colors yeah. do they come in and how much so, do they cost? So and most what's of the them lifespan? Will, will look like this, basically a grayish coloration. I've seen them get a lot darker. Um, I have seen some really nice green ones. A buddy of mine, Eric, has a really, really cool green one. Uh, and usually, sometimes they lose the coloration, the green coloration as they get older, but his has remained, uh, has kept that coloration. So I think this animal is, is still kind of, I mean, nobody has really tried to work with it. Nobody has tried to make new mores yet. So it's still kind of early to say how many colors there will be. But even, you know, with this, grayish coloration and this you know when it fires up it gets these cool stripes and circles all around its body but even just like this it's a such a beautiful um lizard and just very prehistoric looking very big head they're very interesting especially when they're eating or drinking water um yeah just super cool and shipping to florida is 35 dollars anywhere in florida and how much do they cost so uh, generally, you're looking at around $300 to $350. Um, I have seen them go for around like $200. Bucks. 
but uh, but generally it's gonna be around three hundred dollars. And these guys right now, uh, it's a little bit harder to find females at the moment because everybody wants to keep their females to breed. Um, we will be having some available very soon. Uh, as of right now, I don't have any in stock, but I am working on getting a couple to sell and and for myself. But yeah, the I mean, I mean, look at that beard, man. It's just super interesting. Those eyes. Just weird, weird uh, creature. Any other questions? So, what's the lifespan and how and what do they eat? Are they insectivores? People. Ask. Yeah, so they're insectivores. In the wild, they're actually, um, as you can see, they're very slow-moving lizards. They're not gonna dart off or anything like that. Um, so in the wild, they're actually just eat a lot of snails. Snails are really high in calcium, and what they'll do is they'll just kind of like walk over to the snails and you know just eat them but in captivity we could feed them a wide variety of insects like you know crickets roaches uh, hornworms things like that I have actually I have a friend who actually started feeding his um, some crested gecko diet and would feed it crested gecko diet every now and then um, I haven't tried to feed mine crested gecko diet but their their uh, food their main source of food is gonna be you know the insects they do require a high amount of calcium so Especially the females because they lay eggs, you know, very very frequently. You want to make sure that you give them enough calcium so that they're not gonna crash. The males don't need as much calcium, but um, it's still good to you know keep your animals nice and healthy. Any other questions? What's the best um, Pangaea and why are they called false chameleons? Well, the best Pangaea it really depends on your geckos. Um, I'm having a lot of luck with the. Uh, apricot the, the banana apricot that's probably one of the best um you know in terms of like feeding responses is probably one of the best ones and these guys they're called cuban false chameleons because their eyeballs look like chameleon eyes and they have almost like a similar head shape to a chameleon and they asked how long do they live did you ask answer that oh question? how long do they live i'm actually not sure i believe it's like around 10 years but I'm not sure on that. I, I actually got to look that up myself. So yeah, um, you want to keep these guys in a kind of like a, a an arboreal type enclosure, preferably a higher enclosure than a 10 gallon tank. I just, I had to put them in this because that's what I have at the moment. But as you can see in the bottom, I have some moss. It's going to help keep the humidity up. I have uh, some cork bark, some branches where he likes to perch and I never see him in the floor really. He always perching or, you know, um, he's when he wants to drink, he licks off the water off the sides of the enclosure or I'll just spray him in his mouth. And they, uh, what I have heard is that the females, the only time the female will go to the floor is when she's ready to lay the eggs. And look at this guy, he's just chilling on my hand very cool I'm gonna try to feed him a cricket let me see if he'll take one I'm gonna put you right here let me grab one cricket and you do need to keep some UV on these guys um, you don't wanna obviously they're they they are no creatures so they're gonna require some UV and you don't need it you can provide them a hot spot of around like 90 degrees like 80 look at that cricket blood I'm just kidding so you can provide them a hot spot of around 90 degrees. Let's see if he'll eat it. But you gotta make sure that the rest of the enclosure is pretty cool. You don't wanna um, overheat these guys because, uh, let's see if he'll eat this cricket. I don't just throw crickets in here because they are very slow and they won't catch them. So what I recommend doing is giving them like a little glass bowl or something that they could kind of look over and go and get their insects whether it's you know like worms or uh, crickets or roaches you don't want this cricket buddy maybe he's a little shy since I just took him out but they're really cool when they eat especially when the they just have such a big head and a big mouth so, it's very interesting. Hmm. Yep, I guess not.
Cuban False Chameleon. One of my favorite, uh, new favorite lizards. Definitely, I would say definitely my favorite anole. Um, especially you guys that live here in Florida see all the brown anoles, the Cuban night anoles, the green anoles that we have. So that's another cool little lizard to get into. And they're not as fast as the anoles, so you, you know, you can actually handle them and, and have fun with them. But another thing I wanted to show you guys was here in my room, this is where I basically keep all my abronia. So I wanted to show you a couple of the baby lithrachillas. Um, and you know, when I'm hanging around in my room, all the lithrachillas go, they go and hide and all the abronia go and hide, most of them anyway. But this is uh, my male lithrachilla. As you can see, he has some nice reds on him. It's kind of hard to capture on camera, but the common name for these guys is a red-lipped alligator lizard. As you can see, he has some blues, some greens, and some red on top. And the female that I have is actually very similar to him, almost identical to him, actually. And she did pop some babies out, so I'm very excited to, you know, uh, they, I've had them for about uh, three or four weeks now, so they're just about ready to you know to be shipped and uh, so I will be posting those for sale very soon and I also wanted to show you those guys because they had when they hatch out they're super tiny and they grow very quickly especially when you're feeding them insects and all this you they're gonna start to grow very quickly so basically this is how we keep the abronia babies here I like to put some sphagnum moss because they like to hide in between the moss to make them feel secure. Obviously, I put a fake plant or two. Um, that way they could crawl around. They are they are arboreal, so they like to, you know, climb around that. I give them some cork bark where they usually hide under. And here are some of the babies that we have. As you can see, they hatch out very plain, kind of like any of the other um, abronia lizards very uh you know they don't look like much now but in a couple months these guys are going to start to color up beautifully and this is one of the abronia lithrachilla babies we have i'm probably going to hold back a couple of these see if i could start a breeding project myself um the female i acquired i got her gravid so i knew she was gravid that's why i got her i i, I spent a couple of months with her and then she finally decided to pop a couple babies we lost some of the babies but the ones that are alive are doing really good um, here's the other one all right whatever buddy there you go look at how cute this little lizard is so we basically are just feeding them uh, like two week old crickets or pinhead crickets when they had when they're born we feed them like uh, pinhead crickets once they have a couple of weeks on them we feed uh, the two week old crickets and they're doing great I haven't put UV on them yet I'm working on that but one thing I do want to tell you guys is if you're gonna keep them in something like this you don't want to put the UV right on top of here because that, that's gonna heat up the UV bulbs they do heat up a little bit and that might be too close and it's gonna heat up the, the their environment so much that they're not gonna be able to get away from the heat and it could possibly kill them these guys you want to keep cool you want to make sure that they're not you know overheated especially the babies because you know babies could start dropping like flies if you're not keeping them right and even when you do keep them right you're gonna lose some of them um, so it's hard to you know when, once you have babies you got to have like almost perfect conditions because if you don't they, they could start dying off um, so these babies have been doing good so far these are the abronia lithrachilla babies like that red male I just showed you um, these are gonna be available for sale now I also wanted to show you some of our bigger oops, some of our bigger abronia graminia babies that we have and this is one of them as you can see this one's a lot bigger you see all this grayish and brownish coloration they're gonna lose all that and they're gonna turn bright green when they get older 
I've had this baby for about two months now. It's doing very good. I actually don't lose any of the Graminia babies, but the Lithrichilla babies, I lost a couple. So I'm still trying to figure those out, but I hope to I hope that in the next couple of years I could, you know, really perfect, you know, keeping these guys and we will have some a lot available and we will be able to breed them with ease. So this is one of the Abronia Graminia babies. And now I'm going to show you an, an adult. I also want to show you some of my setups. Is there any questions? Mm, any questions, guys? Okay. So, let me get one of the adults out. How big do they get? Uh, Abronia graminia, they get around, they get around like 12 inches long, but most of that is tail. They do have a very long prehensile tail. And, uh, let me see if I can find this. And guy. do they change color? No, not really. Well, there are some that, so look, some of them can change color if they are, like, it depends on how you keep them. People really still haven't figured them out 100% yet. Um, it depends on how you keep them. If you have, uh, if you have good lighting on them and you feed a, you know, a, a diet full of variety, um, you know, you gut load your insects with, you know, greens and fruits and a lot of variety. I think that's what helps them keep that bright green coloration because I've had some that have never lost the bright green coloration. I've also had some that did lose the green coloration and that became um they became more of a like a bluish or a turquoise kind of color but it all depends on uh i think it really depends on the lighting you have and the what's it called the food that you're giving them someone asked what colors do you have them and is it random if they'll be blue or green and also do you have a I, colombian tegu i again so look this is one of our females um, this is a, a Abronia graminia. These guys are actually endangered in the wild. And there has been a lot of people who have been smuggling them into the country. Um, so just be careful if, if, you know, if you're, if you're looking to get one, just make sure that you're not getting them from anybody sketchy. Make sure you go with a, you know, with a business that's reputable. But she's, as you can see how fat she is, she is probably going to drop some babies sometime soon. Um, and the coloration, yeah, like I said, I, I've seen some green ones. Um, this is a blue eyed green alligator lizard, as you can see. Let me see if I could get her to, they have blue eyes. I don't know if you guys can see that good, but they have blue eyes and their body is green. Now I have seen that sometimes, depending on how much lighting they're getting, sometimes they decide to hide for a couple weeks, like under the sphagnum moss or, or you know, in their, what's it called, in their cork bark or something like that. They do tend to get a little bit darker, but once they start coming out again and they start feeding on like, you know, gut loaded insects and, you know, vitamin dusted crickets, they do get their coloration a little bit better. So these guys basically you want to keep them like an any arboreal lizard, a lot lots of plants. You could give them like two inches of sphagnum moss as substrate, and uh, you want to make sure that with these guys you give them a UV, a 5.0 UV lamp, and you want to make sure that you give them well. You don't have to, but I always recommend giving them some sort of like live plant, especially like the bromeliads, because the bromeliads, they're, that's what, when where they're from in the wild, they have a lot of bromeliads. And that's where they know to, you know, find shelter or get water. And that's, you know, it's, it's natural to them, basically. So it's always good to have a little piece of their, you know, hab of their uh, environment in their new habitat enclosure, whatever. Do you have a Colombian tegu? No, I don't have any Colombian tegus. Uh, I wish I could get one, but I don't have the space to get tegus at the moment. In the future, I will get a couple tegus though. Someone said that um, at their nearest Petco, they, they, there's a crusty with no tail and it's half off. Um, should they buy it? 
I, I don't recommend... Listen, I sell Crested Geckos. I'm not going to tell you to go buy your Crested Geckos somewhere else that it's not for me because I believe... Where are you going? I believe that I will sell you the healthiest Crested Gecko, especially when it comes to a Petco or one of these stores that don't specialize in Cresteds. So I'm going to always tell you, get it from me. That's just being honest. Okay? How much do they cost? Uh, like... The, the abronia, so abronia, uh, the small juveniles that will grow up to look like that female there with the bright green, they're going to be a, around $150. Um, the babies, sometimes you can find a little bit cheaper, but they are very hard to care for, especially if you don't have any, you know, experience. They could die very easily. One day they're doing great. The next day, you know, they're dead. So... You got to make sure that if you're getting an abronia baby, you have had some experience and the juveniles, you know, they're they're a little bit hardier. So, if you want to start off and you don't have, you know, the money to get an adult, I would say get one of the juveniles. I I, I call them juveniles, but they're really just bigger babies and uh and you know, those that are well started, those are always going to be have a better chance in survival. How did you start your hobby? How did I start my hobby? A lot of passion, a lot of years of being obsessed with dinosaurs. And one time I just, I mean, I have a whole video. I think I talk about this in a whole other video, but basically short, long story short, um, I was had an obsession with dinosaurs, came to the United States and where I'm from in Venezuela, there isn't that much um, like, People aren't as into reptiles as they are in here in the United States. So when I got here to this country, you know, I had an uncle who actually bred snakes. Um, he married my aunt. He's an American guy. And he sh brought me to a reptile show. I basically, you know, held chameleons, crested geckos, uh, bearded dragons, all that stuff. I fell in love. Fast forward a whole bunch of years after keeping all these animals for a long time, I decided I'm going to get a big lot of them. I'm going to sell off the ones I don't want to keep. I'm going to breed the ones I want to keep. And that just started into a business. And it just, it was, it was a hobby. And now it's a business that is still my hobby and it's still my passion. But it just, it was like a snowball effect. And I'm still hoping to get even bigger. Someone, a <laughs> Someone asked, can you try to upload more winky face? Yes, we are trying. If you remember last year, I only gave you one video every month now i'm giving you a youtube live every saturday except the saturdays that you know we're doing the reptile shows and we really can't and a new video a new episode of tiki skeckles at the end of the month but i know i want to try to upload more it's just not as easy as you guys think because editing a video um it just takes a lot of time and i have to care for a lot of animals i have two other jobs besides owning my own business so it's not as easy, but I'm going to try, I promise you guys. Screen or glass habitat? For what? They just said screen or glass habitat. For what? Well, person. <laughs> okay, screen uh, or glass habitat for, let's say, a bronia. As you can see, I have a screen cage here and a glass cage here. It, it really, you could keep them in either or. It just depends on, you know, if... If you, for example, in something like this, I have to mist a lot longer than I do in something like this. Here, I can mist the, the sides of the enclosure and, you know, the plants and stuff, and it's going to have a really high humidity. Here, I have to keep misting the plants and make sure I see my animals drinking when I'm misting. Um, that way, it doesn't lose the humidity as quick. And, you know, and th the, the good side about something like this is that they'll br the lizards can crawl on the side of the cage. It could be upside down if they want to get closer to the UV. And this is much lighter. So if I want, I can literally pick this up, take it outside, and have my abronia get some natural sunlight. And something like this, uh, I'm less inclined to do so because it's very heavy. And if you put this in the sun, it's going to act like a magnifying glass. And it's going to fry the animal inside of it. So, um, yeah, you don't... Obviously, you wouldn't put something like this outside, but you could take uh, one of these screen enclosures and put them outside. And if you 
have the ability to do that, you know, if you in your house you have a patio, a fenced patio, you could take your abroni outside and temperatures are good. I always suggest you do that because the natural sunlight is gonna, you know, it's always better than a, you know, a bulb. But we can't always provide that, so it just really it depends on what you uh, you're capable of doing with your lizards. Okay. Do you have a red-eyed crocodile skink? No, I do not have any at the moment. Um, we do get them from time to time and we sell them, but right now I don't have them and I don't keep them personally. Do you ship international? Um, yes and no. Some pla some countries I can ship to, some others I can't. Uh, for example, like Canada, I can ship to Canada, the UK, um, some parts of Europe, but like South America, it's I can't ship to South America, so it just depends on wh where we are. Someone asked, where can I get one of your crested geckos, and how much would one be for a long-time subscriber? Only at tikisgeckos.com. Oh, and, yeah, so you want to get a crested gecko and a long-time subscriber? You could have subscribed yesterday, I would never know. But, listen, um, just check out our website, www.tikisgeckos.com. And you're gonna see a lot of geckos there in different price ranges. I have geckos starting at $35 all the way up to $400. So if you're looking to breed and start a new project, I have geckos for you. And if you're just looking to get a pet gecko for like 35 or 50 bucks, I also have a gecko for you. So yeah, just check us out. And if you have any questions, feel free to call or uh, email us. But here, I'm gonna unplug my phone from the charger. And I want to show you guys how I keep the abronia. So over here, let's start off here. This is where I keep the, my abronia mixteca, uh, the Mexican alligator lizard. It's right here. Actually, he's probably going to try to bite me. So this is another type of abronia. You see how he puffs, puffs up his neck right here? That means he's kind of angry. He doesn't like when I just pick him up without him asking to be picked up. But this is a Abronia mixteca, is a uh, Mexican arboreal alligator lizard. As you can see, what distinguishes this species is the black marks that they have down the back and down the tail. Um, mostly the males have that, but I have seen some females with some really dark uh, spots. And look how angry this guy is. Calm down, buddy. It's usually pretty, pretty cool, but I don't want to bother him much. But basically, what I keep in their enclosure is uh, some cork bark. Okay, some, you know, some branches. I have some fake plants here. And I also have a big bromeliad over here where when I, you know, when you water this, it, it creates little puddles in there. And this guy will just stick his head in that little puddle and drink water. That's how they usually do it in the wild. And obviously it has sphagnum moss and like, uh, what's it called? Like dirt in the bottom. So that's one of my enclosures for the abronia. This is another enclosure this is where i had the pair of abronia lithrachilla only the female is in there for now but she's hiding because i'm making a lot of I'm mumbling a lot and i'm talking and she doesn't like me so that's that obviously all of them have some uv lighting this girl has uv lighting here this guy has uv lighting here and this is uh, the other abronia lithrachilla the other male and he has uv lighting as well um Let's see if any of the abronia want to eat if they're not all hiding. So right now, this is how I keep the, um, where I'm keeping the babies. Now, the adults are back here. Let me move these real quick so I can show you guys the adults. Uh, man, let's just move this. As you can see, I am running out of room quickly and I need to open up my own store already, but that will come. All right. So. This is another one of the abronia cages. This is a 12 by 12 by 18. Again, I put like two inches of sphagnum moss in the bottom, whole bunch of branches and cork bark for them to climb on, some uh, abromiliad, and they love it there. The UV over here, so they'll perch right here if they want to get some UV. Um, here's another one of my branches. Uh, sorry, another one of my branches. Another one of my enclosures. So you can see some bromeliads, our lichen branches that you guys could buy off of us. 
um, what's it called? Cork bark in the bottom, UV, and they're all hiding because they all hate me, unfortunately. Someone asked, um, can you ship to Denmark? And someone asked if you can ship to Austria. I'm sorry. I, I, honestly, I might be able to, but it's really hard to, what's it called, to, to ship to those places sometimes. Another one of our Bronia cages. When I come in here, these guys tend to hide and, you know, whatever. I'll, I'll, I might as well show you guys this little guy here. Oh, he's shedding. I don't want to bother him. But that's the satanic leaf-tailed gecko. But whatever. You guys have seen him before. Alright. Um, now, let me put this back real quick. Any other questions? Are Abronia beginner reptiles? No. Well, listen. If you really care about the animals, if you're really responsible, if you're not just going to throw an animal in a cage and just kind of like do the bare minimum to take care of it, if you're not going to do that, then I say, yes, you, sh you can get an abronia. I don't ever, I'm not anybody to say, no, you don't deserve to get this animal or you don't deserve to get this animal. So I just want to let you know that since these animals are a little bit, you know, um, like especially the younger ones, they're 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 very difficult to take care of. So if you're gonna get an abronia as a first time reptile, just make sure you do your research. Make sure that um, you know that you're you're well aware of what you're getting yourself into, and just do your best to take care of the animal. You know they they don't really have a choice whether they want to be kept in an, in, an, in an enclosure or not. So if we're gonna keep them in captivity, you might as well. Do the best you can to keep them. What size enclosure is the Mixtica in? Oh, that's an 18 by 18 by 18. 18 by 18 by 18. I have a small Reptibreeze. Can I keep one female veil chameleon in that terrarium? How, how small is a small Reptibreeze? I don't, I don't really know. Oh, uh, well. Uh, do you have... And Cathosara. What? And Cathosara. Let me see. Hold on. No, I don't. How do you pronounce that? I don't. I don't attend the ham reptile show. I see somebody is asking uh, about the ham show. That's in Germany, man. I am not going to Germany yet. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions? How do you get blue ones? Blue ones what? Oh, I'm guessing bronia? you're talking about a bronia, yeah. Um, like I said, some will turn blue with um, with time in captivity. Um, others will others will just when they grow up they they I've seen some that are raised the same way and one turn green and one turn blue. So I can't I don't really know. It's hard to it's, it's hard to say. I've we've had blue ones too in the past. Um Manny, I think Manny has a blue one now, but it's just like, it just really depends because so, I don't, I'm not really sure if it's like a husbandry thing or is it a feeding thing. I'm not sure. What's your favorite type of gecko that's not crusted? Gargoyle gecko. Come on, too easy. You guys know me. Check out this guy one more time before we go. How cool is this guy? It's very... Here, I'm gonna open it. You can look from the top. Oh, it's freaking out. He's not freaking out. <laughs> He's excited. Look how cool this animal is. Just doesn't mind being held. Look at those scales. Can they see the scales? Tap the phone. Yeah, just tap it there. Well, yeah, look at that beard. He has more of a beard than I do. I have a baby face. So yeah, my newest project. Hey, where are you going? You jumping? Wow, I didn't know I could jump like that. So this is my newest project. 
I hope you guys like it. I hope you guys are excited because these guys are really, really cool. I could totally see myself just setting up a huge enclosure and just putting a group in there. But, uh, yeah. Camellioles Barbados. The Cuban False Chameleon. If you guys like them, if you guys are interested in seeing what we're going to do with these animals and if you want to possibly get one in the future from us or you want to keep up with the breeding project of them, feel free to follow us on social media. That's where we'll be posting, you know, all the news related to them. And, uh, yeah. I'll take a couple more questions and then we got to go. Is that his real cage? That's his real cage. That's um, his real, really real cage. What's the deal with that brown thing in the rectangle cage? What brown thing? I don't know. I think they might be talking about the stick. That's a cork bark piece. How can I keep a reptile if I live in a place with cold weather? Well, you keep them indoors, okay? And if it's kind of cold in your in your house, like in the 60s, then you keep a, a heat bulb on them. Or like a low watt, it depends on what reptile it is, but if it's something like that, or an abronia, you keep a low wattage heat bulb on them. And if it's something like a bearded dragon, then you would need a hot, a really hot bulb. So, excuse me. What is the best Pangea flavor for gargoyles? You know, my gargoyles, they tend to like, um, they tend to like the, the apricot and, what's it called, Apri uh, banana apricot, that's the one they like the most, uh, they, some of them like the insects a lot, um, the rapashi grub pie, they also like that a lot, not the grub pie, the rapashi grubs and fruit, that one, for some reason, my gargoyles like a lot. Um, and if you want to get Pangea, you could get it, you know, you could help us and support us and get it from our website, which is retail price. Um, what else? What else do they like? Gargoyles really like, yeah, I think the, the Pangea, ap banana apricot and the Pangea insects and the Rapashi grubs and fruit. Have you ever gone bioactive? No, I actually haven't. Um, I just never I don't know I just never have maybe in the future I will set up a really nice enclosure in my house or something and make it bioactive but as of right now I haven't could I use a flood lamp for heat I don't know what that is is it possible to go on a waiting list for juvenile abronia graminia what waiting list you don't need to go on a waiting list we have them available now contact us and then you could get one What's the new breeding project animal name, and what's the deal with that? That guy? That's a Cuban false chameleon. And the deal with that is I think they're really, really cool. They're very tame by nature. You could set them up in a really beautiful enclosure. So I think that, you, you know, and they're easy to reproduce. And so I think that, that makes kind of like a, you know, that's why I think it's going to be a great project. How hot do bearded dragons have to be in? Um, you want to keep, you want to give them a hot spot of around 110 degrees, 100 to 110 degrees, and you want to give them a cooler side of around 80 degrees. So, in their enclosure, you want to make sure that there's a spot where, where they bask. You want to make sure that you know that spot. You could have them perch up on a branch, and that hot spot it has to be like around 100, and then. On the cooler side of the enclosure, around 80 degrees. That way, they could thermoregulate for the bearded dragons. And you could, uh, you guys could also check out our bearded dragon video that we uh, posted last month. So check that out if you have any more questions. Have your male crested geckos um, ever had their hemi penile bulge move or twitch? Yeah, I mean, males do that. They like especially if you put them in there with a female they'll you know they'll junk will come out or they'll move their bulge but yeah that happens
That's normal. <laughs> Are you gonna get a Chinese crocodile soon? Oh, I wish. Um, I that's something I would love to own and work with, but. I don't, I'm not going to get any anytime soon. Those things are expensive and hard to breed. But I do want to work with them in the future, for sure. Someone said your site only has adults and babies. Yeah, so um, those, the babies, like, they're, they're juveniles. They're baby, they're uh, bigger babies, basically. What I, what I just showed you guys, it's a juvenile, but it's a bigger baby, really. Um, so if you check out on that, on, on my website, those are the ones that I'm selling, the bigger juveniles. I'm not selling the baby babies. I just put baby abronia because, you know, it's just, that's what the picture is, basically. It's, it's a baby abronia. And those are bigger babies. What do you do about a female who won't breed? She is 45 grams and eating great crested gecko. Um, what do you mean she won't breed? Have, have you placed her with a male? How long have you had them together? What are the temperatures? You, I need more details. So but if you want me to help you, just call me after or you know, email me and then I can help you. I have a female that has floppy tail or kinked pelvis. How can I tell if she is egg bound and can you show how to check for eggs in a female? Okay. Um, oh, the other person said she keeps trying to fight with the male. It's okay. I mean, listen, lizard breeding is, is kind of rough, okay? Lizards, the males go and trying to bite the females, the females try to bite the male, and basically a female is testing how vigorous a male is and the male will just breed her if he's strong enough. That's how lizards breed. If they're just nipping at each other and things like that, that's normal. Just let them be and they'll breed eventually if your male is big enough. Um, now, if you start to see like serious injuries, like, you know, like if there's blood or if they're ripping, you know, like their eyeballs open or something, then you would separate them. But if they're just nipping at each other, that's absolutely normal. So just let them be and they will breed. Um, the other question, what was the other question? Uh, that they have a female that has a floppy tail or king oh, pelvis. Okay. The floppy tail thing. Is she egg bound? How no, to tell? No. Egg bound? People freak out about geckos being egg bound. I have probably lost one or two crested geckos to being egg bound. And keep in mind, guys, I breed hundreds of them. So uh, it's really not very common. And if. Just because she has floppy tail or, or tilted pelvis, it doesn't mean she's going to go egg bound. Um, just, you know, provide a lay box, a moist lay box where she could go and deposit her eggs. Now, uh, if you see her, she starts blowing up a lot and you feel her and it's hard, then she might have be egg bound. But if she's just looking like normal or looking a little bit more fat, doesn't mean she's egg bound. Don't worry about that. Mm, how to check for eggs. You check for eggs. Um, it's really not something I could show you through video. Basically what I'm doing is I'm grabbing the crested gecko. Um, the, their eggs will develop here on the sides. You know, one on here and one on here. So I'm grabbing the crested gecko. I'm kind of letting her run through my finger and I'm kind of pressing lightly and just trying to feel for an oval shape in the you know, in the lower abdomens. So that's what you're doing when you're trying to check for eggs. It's hard to, it's, I, I can't, I'm not gonna, sh I can't show you right now, but it's hard to explain it or even to show through video. It's something that you just kinda gotta, kinda gotta get some practice at and then you'll start to defer, to, you know, to tell the difference between egg, uh, eggs in a female and, and, you know, what's just a fat female. Can you sex the juveniles? I think they're talking about the abronia. Um, no, uh, those, the, like a big juvenile you can you can try and sex the babies you can't really sex because I don't want to hurt them um, but yeah I, the, you, you can't sex those babies no or the juveniles no someone asked can I keep a pair of crested geckos all year together yes and someone said I have a lizard who will not eat insects when I am there so I cannot really put calcium on the insect what can I do and he is he eats rapashi grub pie. Is it enough for calcium? What kind of lizard is it? Um, if it's just eating the crickets while you're not there, like if it's 
more secretive. I have some geckos that are shy like that, like, and some that don't even care I'm there, if I'm there or not. But just sprinkle the, the crickets with calcium and throw them in the enclosure, and he will eat them himself, you know? Um, it was an Acanthrosaura capra. Sprinkle the, the, the crickets with the calcium and just throw them in the enclosure and they will eat them if it's healthy. Do you also like snakes? Yes, I love snakes, but if I had to pick, I would go with lizards. I'm a lizard person, but I love snakes also. I love all animals, all reptiles. Can I keep more questions? Can I keep a pair of Madagascar giant day geckos together? Like a male and a female? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Just give them a big enough enclosure, make sure they're around the same size, and enough food so they don't fight over the food. There aren't really more questions. All right, no more questions. YouTube, you're slacking all the time. Oh, wait. This, <laughs> this was Instagram. It'd be popping with questions, but yeah. it's okay. Do you, do you keep any species of Felsuma? Felsuma? No, I don't. Uh, Felsuma, for those of you guys that don't know, are the day geckos, like the Madagascar giant day gecko and, and, and those things. I don't keep them. I do sell them. Like, when, when people say keep them, I'm thinking, like, do I keep them? Do I breed them? Do I like to keep them? I would love to. I actually have kept them in the, in the past, but at the moment, I don't. I do sell them from time to time when I have them available, but I don't, when, aside from me selling them, I don't really keep them just to have them. Um, I just, they're, they can tame down very well, but they're just a little too skittish for me. And I would love to, you know, if I had enough room, guys, I would keep everything, but I got to stick to what I really, really like if because I have limited amount of room. Maybe one day I will keep every single reptile in the world, but as of right now, that's it. All right, guys, I'm gonna play Switch now. So. This starts the beginning of your gaming channel? Yeah, right, Tiki's Games. <laughs> uh, okay, so, um, if you guys, are gamers and you don't like Zelda or you don't like Nintendo unsubscribe from my channel right now I don't want to hear from you <laughs> <I'm just kidding. laughs> but um, if you guys don't know Zelda is the greatest game in the history of games of game them so I'm gonna play Zelda for a little bit then I'm gonna finish working and thanks for watching